us on our timetable so that uh, we can get get our dis discussion going so Mark can go ahead and <laughs> make his practice. So, um, but uh, yeah, if uh, Penny, if you don't have any objection, I'd like to go ahead and start the meeting. Sounds great. Um, if it's all right, I will go ahead and read the brief statement that I'm required to read. I will read it as fast as possible. So uh, Sounds good. Well, I'll try to keep up. Welcome to the February 11th Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting. My name is Penny Holler. I'll be facilitating the Zoom video portion of this meeting. Joined here in a minute by Director Derek Rogers and additional Parks and Rec staff via Zoom. This meeting is being recorded and broadcast on the city's YouTube channel successfully. During the meeting, please mute yourself by clicking on the microphone icon found in the lower left side of the Zoom menu. This is also where you can turn your camera on and off. For purposes of this public meeting, please keep your video on during the meeting. Um, for general public comment, Chair Bart Littlejohn will call you by name to speak. Uh, each participant has three minutes. Those same rules apply for public comment on agenda items. Please remember to say your name and title each time you speak. And if a vote is necessary, the chair will capture votes from each advisory board member separately by roll call vote. With that, I'd like to turn the meeting back over to Chair Bart Littlejohn. Thank you for that, Penny. And uh, did, uh, just a quick question. Do we have any uh, public comment sign up? I have no one registered and I have no one that has um, joined the meeting. Okay, okay, cool. Um, all right, uh, that being said, I'd like to go ahead and bring this meeting to order. Um, and first off on our agenda are the minutes from the January 11th meeting. If you haven't had the opportunity yet, please take the opportunity to go ahead and review them. This is Marilyn Hull. I would like to move approval of the minutes. Okay, that's Marilyn Hull with a motion to go ahead and approve. Is there a second out there? Pat Phillips, I second it. Pat Phillips with the second. Uh, I take it everybody's gone ahead and reviewed it. Any questions or any comments? Seeing as there are none, all those in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. Looks like we've got a majority there. Looks like, and any opposed? Seeing ours, if there is none, minutes are approved. All right, folks. Uh, and since we don't have public comment, we're gonna go ahead and skip that one. And uh, to go ahead and keep us on time as well, uh, I was talking to Penny and it looks like uh, initially we had the uh, coma on there, the Kansas Open Meetings Act, but uh, I believe Penny has gone ahead and sent us enough information via email and looking at the form itself, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you have any questions, go ahead and just forward those to Penny and Derek, just to let them know that they can go ahead and get you up to date on that. Um, and uh, unfortunately the park naming, uh, park naming subcommittee, we're, we're gonna go ahead and move that to March, our March meeting. So uh, just because this is a special circumstance with this meeting and it just happened, happened to be moved. So um, that being said, we'll go ahead and start off with the CIP. Hi, everybody. Let me uh, share my screen here. Um, it, I'm assuming everyone had a chance to at least peruse through the projects that were proposed. Monopoly money at this point in time until we get a chance to get this up to the finance department and, and the city manager's office. I'll start somewhere and this is where we start. Okay, am I still on? Yes, you're still on, but I think we lost screen sharing. 
Am I back? Yep, uh, we can see the uh, CIP now. Black. Um, so just walking through these, I guess what I'd like to know is if there's anyone that you have particular concerns with or ones you think are in the wrong slot, or do we wanna just have a, a general discussion first or do we want, want me to walk through these and talk about them a little bit? Um, this is Marilyn Hull, board member. Mark, I just had a question on the priorities. So it looks like half of them are NA. I'd like to know what that means. And I'm also assuming that the higher the number, the higher the priority. I just wanted to confirm that. Right. So that also is something that's in process. So once we submit these, they'll be ranked by a scoring committee with the city. So some of those that have numbers are ones that were ranked last year. Some of the NAs haven't been ranked yet. So yes, and the higher number is the better number as far as priorities. It's a matchup with the city strategic plan. That's basically what it does. So. Got it. Any other general questions or would you like me to go through it, Bart? Um, if you would, if nobody has any general questions, just go ahead and go through it and then okay. go ahead and. I'll do a quick fly through, and that usually is the best to work off of this sheet. Uh, playground replacements, we're working on basically trying to do a couple per year. We have so many playgrounds, and some of them are outdated, so we're trying to hit a couple. In 22, we're looking at uh, Lions and Stone, Stonegate Park. Uh, this year, we're doing South Park and uh, Broken Arrows. So um, next year, we're pr proposing Broken Arrow Restroom, Broken Arrow Shelter be replaced, very high end or highest use shelter reservation facility. A uh, youth sports complex, this is kind of a continuing thing that the ADA out there, it's such a large property that we're trying to push money towards better accessibility on soccer, football, baseball. So we did a little work on baseball this last year and we'll try to do a little bit more this year. Water Tower Park, this is kind of a current events type thing where we know the water tower is gonna to be moving if MSO moves that project forward. And this would basically come back and, and rehab the park after that project play takes place. Um, pickleball, tennis courts, basketball courts. This is an ongoing thing where we have, I think, 32 courts. And we're starting to notice quite a few of them are starting to get some structural issues with larger cracks that are causing playability issues. So this starts a program that will start doing one or two a year. Uh, De Victor Park, we have a couple sections over there that one is an ag line section that should be paved and another is a is a spur that would connect a different neighborhood to that loop trail which then it hooks over to the school so it's a pretty high use trail as far as the neighbor regional neighborhood area eisenhower drive park is a property behind the new police station uh, we've had that master plan we'd like to start moving on some of the renovations or improvements to that park Holcomb Sports Complex, um, this one we've kind of morphed a little bit. We were originally talking about trying to just do, you know, minor fence repairs, that sort of thing. As we started talking about it, we started to think about what do the better complexes have? And a lot of them have artificial turf surfaces. So this proposes three artificial turf infields um, to improve that complex and kind of bring it up to a standard that a lot of these tournaments are playing on around the region. Install fiber, this one is kind of the not real exciting project, but our shop out by the East Sports Complex has a really slow internet speed. And they always say they're on dial up, which is not quite right, but they are on, uh, on a Verizon system that's not too reliable for them. And then a lot of the bigger city programs like GIS, they can't run. So they end up going to other facilities to do their work. A water spray park, this is a series, so our first Water spray park will go over Burroughs Creek this year. Lions will be the second, and you'll see two or three down the list here. Oak Hill Cemetery, again, kind of a current event project that the Friends of Oak Hill are working on some um, grant proposals. This money would basically act as a match to that grant. So we're starting to look at historic preservation of some of the older sections of that cemetery. 
So it's on the, the site of historic place. It's the National Historic Register. So we're trying to, this is more of a conversation starter on the city commission level is, is this something we want to invest in or do we want to have private funds just go to that? Dark, dog park improvements, again, current events. Um, looking at you know the 27th Street project, we kind of start to take a little closer look at the dog park and its use and are our facilities up to the level we would expect you know, a park of that amount of traffic. So this replaces the, um, the pit toilet out there with the flush toilet and then does some parking improvements. Uh, Lawrence Loop 8th to 7th. So the project that we had scheduled for last year goes 11th Street to 8th Street with the loop, um, which would leave a gap from 8th Street over to the Santa Fe Depot. So this would just fill in that little short gap. Parking lots you'll see in every year. Uh, this is something that we're thinking if we just keep do, doing a couple hundred thousand a year, we'll, we'll start to get a little turn on what our parking lots and roads look like. Uh, this last project is actually a 23 project, but this is the pre-work for uh, the loop section that goes from Michigan Street over Sh Sandra Shaw Park over near the hospital. Uh, this would basically be acquisition of property and or right away and design of that project. We anticipate, and this is kind of a current event thing also, we anticipate a grant being uh, approved from KDOT here shortly. So we'll see if that comes through. That funds this project down here. So the 900,000 and the 500,000 go together. Any questions on 22? This is Marilyn Hull. I have a quick question. Um, I guess I'm old school, but it, do we really need artificial turf for our little kids to play on? I don't have to. A little bit of this is playability. So scheduling, if we get the artificial turf, we aren't doing rain outs. So it depends on the year, how big an issue that is, where we could literally rain out a whole week at a time. And then we're trying to plug those games in. And it, it especially cumbersome on tournaments if we get a Friday night rain or a Saturday morning rain. And we have, you know, 50, 60 teams in town ready to play softball. It becomes quite a, an interesting scheduling issue. So, so the hey, Mark. No, we don't have to, but. Mark, yeah. this is John Blasek. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, for people that don't know much about the advantages of artificial surface, you need to do a little background because the cost of keeping lawns and grass up and the wear and the tear and the reseeding and over a year, your artificial turf pay, pays for itself within three years easily. And you can probably get a 10 year cycle out of it. Plus you don't cancel events to bring money into the town and games like that. So that's that's a no brainer. I mean, that's why you're seeing all your schools go to artificial turf on all grass fields because you can put bands on them. You can put athletic teams on them. You can do everything on them. And it's a 10 year cycle. I would assume, uh, depends on what company you go with, but it's just a no brainer between that and uh, real grass. Um, I, I did have a question about that too. I'm not sure if you would know, John, or Mark would know. Um, regarding that artificial turf as well, would it have the, just out of my curiosity, would it have the same give as grass? Well, I, from what well, I'll just, from the different companies that I've worked with, one, it has just as much give and has better and, and it has safer. I know one company I put in with the schools I was at was called um, Hellas. And they have a great liability factor because they have the rubberized BBs in it. And it's just a really top notch. Might cost a little more than turf field, but uh, yeah, it has just as much get, give and it's safer in the rain. It's safer when it's wet compared to a grass field where your feet slip out or it's just the, 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 the availability to use that is for everything. And yeah, it has just as much give and safer. We, I don't know, Mark, go ahead. I don't know who you send bids out to, so I couldn't answer. Yeah, Lee, did you have any comments on that? All right. I have two small questions. Um, so Mark, when you mentioned the grant that we're looking at for the loop, I just want to be clear. So that's the 525 and the 964. So the KDOT grant would cover how much? 
Um, I don't have that in front of me. Okay. Uh, oh, Jackie Backer also. Sorry, I didn't, didn't preface that. <laughs> yeah, I, I I can't remember. It seemed like it was six or seven hundred thousand. Okay. And so then that six hundred seven thousand that comes out of the two numbers that are on this, or that's in addition to our budget. No, that would be that would come out of the total. Okay. And then my other question, um, I went through and started reading all the CIPs and I saw that on some of them, you say, sometimes the parks are, you had in one line, six parks were 30 to 35 years. One other uh, CIP said four of them. And then you said two are getting repaired. So do you basically every year just say we have this many parks that are at this age and you just try to repair two every year, or do we actually sometimes do more than that? We if it's basically what we've been trying to do is one major park and one smaller park. Okay. So like this year, Broken Arrow is our, our bigger playground. So it'll be pushing $100,000. And then we'll come back and do the top lot at South Park. So that'll be sixty dollars to $70,000 there. So on some of the years, you'll see three in there where we may do a Walnut Park or you know some of those are just more uh, smaller neighborhood parks and aren't really the regional parks. But you usually just always do two then it's never oh all these parks are 30 years of age we should fix them all at once or or it's just pretty much two is what we usually can end up getting yeah two is yeah it'd be nice to go faster honestly but um just more than you want to know but if you go out to the playgrounds and you find a, a playground with square pipes for the poles those are put in in the 80s so those are the ones we're trying to replace now because the manufacturer no longer provides replacement parts. If they have round pipes, they're a little bit newer. So we're trying to get all the square pipes out is basically the, the drill we're doing. Thank you. Okay, moving to 23 again, a couple of playgrounds. So Clinton Park and Dad Perry Park. Now this one where we hit the community building trying to address that ADA issue over there where we don't have elevator access up to the dance studio or the cardio room. So that's either putting a new elevator in or moving the entrance of the building. Um, hasn't been designed yet, that's allocating money. Uh, Rec Center renovation at Carnegie. This is the oldest part of that building, so the 1902 section. Uh, it has some, the wood floors in the gallery rooms need to be replaced, the doors need to replace uh, painting. So. Um, it's more kind of renovation and not really much exciting there. It's just kind of bringing it back. Cemetery maintenance shop, we have three or four buildings uh, between Oak Hill and, and Memorial Park. What would, this would do is basically get rid of the old buildings, build one shop for that whole complex. Aquatic center uh, play features. This one basically goes with the idea of let's replace slides there, diving boards maybe, but improve the play features there that doesn't renovate the pool and in this cip i also mentioned that there's a bigger renovation further down the list so if we don't do the big renovation this one does need to be done because the existing big blue slide down there needs to be replaced it's starting to splinter out and then some of the other amenities just to in, improve the look of the facility water spray park this we put west lawrence in as the next one a little bit undefined, you know, that could be um, Dad Perry Park, it could be the spot out behind the police facility, it could be the Victor Park, uh, just trying to locate these geographically around town. So that could be a conversation point. Uh, Lawrence Loop, Michigan, the Sandra Shaw, so this is the construction, the one we talked about up here. Um, parking lots every year, equipment replacement, we have our big bucket truck that's a high dollar expense. Any questions on 23? Um, I had a question. Uh, I'm not sure if we've went over this before, but I saw in the community building, it's all uh, that 900,000 all in 2023. Was there any way to uh, go ahead and split that over two years? Uh, so that we wouldn't just incur as much cost in one year? I, anything's possible, I would suspect this is going to be hire an architect and figure out the solution and then try to get the solution done as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, I, I would think this would probably be a one year project would be the best way to accomplish it.
these also become the decision points when we get kind of get up up the ladder to the city manager the finance department and city commission as to you know is that a project we want to take on for that amount of dollars or not so again we're just kind of the proposers at this point okay uh bart little john thanks Moving to 24, a um, couple more playgrounds uh, hidden over at Lions Park. So North Lawrence replacing the shelter over there. If you haven't been over there, it's just kind of a tin roof thing that's probably should have been replaced a few years ago. Uh, Lawrence Loop Trail, 7th Street to Constant. So this is that downtown section where we're having quite a bit of trouble routing. This one's more of a placeholder to put it out there. We really don't have a, a good route. We don't have a good design. So this is just kind of continuing the step of Lawrence Loop projects in one right after another and looking at grant options as we go. Acoustical panels at the Sports Pavilion. We've been working on this a little bit at a time. Um, if we aren't done by the time we get to 24, this would finish that project. And that's basically hanging the acoustical panels up in the ceiling to bring the decibel levels down inside the building. And now we've talked about that before, but during these larger volleyball tournaments, we'll get up to about 90 decibels sustained, which is kind of damaging to the ears if you hang around in there all day. So uh, the turf at the sports pavilion in the soccer area will be 10 years old at this point. So we're kind of scheduling that it may be worn out. We aren't sure it's inside, so it may last a little bit longer than an outdoor turf area, but um, we're just kind of putting that out there that's going to be coming. Dog Park of Broken Arrow, we've long talked about bringing the dog park in town. Uh, this does that by basically providing a fenced area over at Broken Arrow Park. Hey, Mark. Uh -huh. This is John Blasey. Go back to your indoor soccer turf. Um, is that one piece, it, because your fibers will last a little longer, but is it, how's it hooked together? Through Velcro? Or is it in different, so you can roll up sections or is it one one long piece? It's It was put in in multiple pieces and they sewed it together. Oh, so it was all put in at once, basically laid it in, sewed in the seams and all the lines are sewed into the turf. And then, so I think it's gonna, we, we could replace sections of it. So if we just thought the middle was worn, that could be replaced or the gold mouse may be worn. You know, you'll always see the patch. But. Yeah, usually trying to replace one piece over the whole thing really kind of is not a good deal. I mean, but if it's sewn together like that, that's really good. Most people don't do that. Yeah. Okay. Cause I've been looking at that turf. It's in, it's a pretty nice turf. Yeah. It's, it's holding up pretty well, honestly, figuring we've been in it for what, six years now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. More tennis court replacement or basketball court or pickleball court. As we do these, we'll probably do more pickleball lines because that seems to be one of our trending up sports. So we'll, we'll try to accomplish more of that. Softball complex, looking at the same thing out there. That complex is actually probably used the longest during the year. So we start out there in March and we'll run into almost October with adult sports. And then we end up with youth sports tournaments on the weekends. This would convert the infields to turf out there. Not necessarily needed for slow pitch, but it sure would help us on the rainouts and maintenance of the complex. There's nothing worse than getting a rain at 3.30 in the afternoon after we've spent the whole day prepping a complex, and then we basically wash it out, and you can't play that night. So, uh, Parking lots, good. Uh, YSC asphalt. So this is starting to asphalt some of those gravel lots out there. Um, won't complete the whole thing, but at least move it forward. Um, this maintenance shop addition is that same shop out by the U Sports Complex. We basically put so much out there that we need to add some equipment storage space. So this probably would not be a heated facility, but just get equipment under roof. Four million dollars in twenty-four. Stop me, or I'll keep moving. Mark, I had one question. It's more regarding um, financing and any of these projects. Um, to have access or renovations um, to make it accessible. Are there outside funding or grants um, to help with that for to make it in um, you know compliance with ADA regulations? That's a good question. And I think you know our ADA coordinators kind of been looking into some of that. Um, 
for the city. And, you know, I think we almost have, it's kind of the chicken or the egg. We almost have to define the project and then see if there's grant funding that might be applied to it. So when we look at some of these things like, a, you know, the youth sports complex and trying to bring that up to where we should be, there might be options for that. But, you know, I, I don't know of any off the top of my head that would just directly apply for accessibility standards. Okay. I was thinking more so even with the community building with, you know, the elevator project that's already got some plans. And so I didn't know if that's something you looked into. I think in that instance, we'd probably be looking at historic resource grants. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll put, you know, grant money towards, you know, bringing an old building up to current standards. So that's kind of what happened with the Carnegie building. You know, we ended up putting that whole back addition on a building that we added an elevator and, and whatnot. So okay. that has some potential. Yeah. Thank you. Mark, <clears throat> this is John Nelbandian. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, can you tell us, um, this is a, a broad question, um, the significance of an item being in the capital improvements uh, plan or, or budget versus your uh, operating budget? Sure. Um, what, what being on the CIP affords us is other funding sources. So operating budget in most cases is general fund funded. In this case, some of these bigger projects will be debt funded and oh. or we may access infrastructure sales tax for things like trails and parking lots. So those are sales taxes oriented towards roads and, and sidewalks. So the, by getting it up to this level, $100,000 and higher, it allows finance to go, okay, we have this funding source here. Let's match that project to that. And it's, you know, literally when we get our, our CIP back, it'll have five or six or seven different funding sources that aren't general fund budget. Thank you. Sure. Going to 25, a couple more playgrounds. Um, staff have recommended the South Park waiting pool renovation be moved up to 24. If you notice, we don't have a spray pad in 24, so um, we'll probably move that one up. <clears throat> more parking lots, uh, youth sports complex. We did some um, LED lighting on Holcomb and the uh, adult softball complex. We didn't get to YSC to switch the lights out there to LED. Those lights out there are approaching 30 years old. So this would renovate the, the eight baseball fields and the two soccer. This money may be a little short, honestly. Uh, property acquisition, this is something we, in our master plan, we defined we need to keep moving forward with future parks, knowing that the city's gonna continue to grow. So we need to grow with it and be out in front of development. Um, these, this set here is kind of renovation of a lot of our facilities. So East Lawrence Center, Holcomb, Prairie Park, Indoor Aquatic Center. And so those are kind of major renovations where you're adding a room or reconfiguring the facilities. Then here's the outdoor pool, a complete renovation. And another uh, playground, actually this playground should be in 26, if you can see. So I need to go in and switch the funding for it. This one will be an interesting public conversation. You know, the, the old pool, a lot of people think is new, but it's we'll be pushing 30 years old when we get to this point. So I think it's it'll be time for a conversation. Questions on that big group? There's a big dollar there. <laughs> Any hollow range analyst, I think it's also um, helpful, you know, uh, as we're looking at this um, to, you know, just got to refresh our, our memory on what we've been trending as far as Parks and Rec and CIP and um, the dollars we've received per year on average have certainly not been in the four to eight million dollar range. They've been more in the say one to two million dollar range. So just to kind of place it in context of when we see there's further work to be done and reviewed in comparison with other city projects, that's kind of how these things tend to um, move after you see the draft. Right, so the interesting thing about this is a lot of this was already in the CIP when it got approved this year. 
So in other words, you know, you submit it one year, then you try to hold it for the next year and the next year and the next year. So I was a little bit encouraged that this whole group made the CIP, the one that got approved for this year. So as it gets closer, you get a little closer look at things, but um, at least putting things out into the future, everyone kind of gets a heads up that things are coming. So, uh, Mark, I had a question uh, regarding the pool. Has, has it been only in the CIP for the last two years or has it been in there for longer? It's been in there longer. This is the first time we, it, we used to have it at about a $2 million renovation. The $4 million pretty much goes to uh, let's get in there and really do some fairly significant renovation. You know, we've talked about is, is the current pool configuration the right thing? Is, would it be better as a destination spray park with a lazy river? You know, there's there's so many new modern aquatic facilities mm -hmm. that isn't just a big, big bathtub with a diving board in the end. So I, you know, by that time, even, you know, four or five years from now, there may be new things. But if you look around, there's, there's a lot of cool aquatic facilities that don't look like ours. And ours was kind of state of the art back in early 90s or mid 90s when we built it. But you know, it's it's kind of looking a little dated now. Mark, Mark, this is this is John Nalbandian. Um, a little a story on that. When we approved the um, the uh, renovations to the outdoor aquatic center, we we just thought you know renovations. You're just going to make a few update this and that. And we got a brand new swimming pool. And it was just like this. I mean, the Outdoor Aquatic Center was just fabulous at the time. And I think it still is. And I just anticipate with so much excitement the possibility of renovation of the Outdoor Aquatic Center this time. I can't imagine what you guys are going to come up with. <laughs> it's kind of fun to dream anyway. <laughs> okay to wrap up here 26 so in our master plan there's a large community shelter that will seat 250 to 300 people that's something we don't have in our inventory so that one's kind of been hanging out there so we went ahead and stuck it in in 26 uh, again kind of a major renovation new sports complex so if we want to compete or if we want to be of the same standard of yeah, you know, the, the facilities in Shawnee County or Johnson County, you know, we're going to have to kind of up our game a little bit. So this would basically bring all those fields up to a reasonable levels. The way that facility was constructed back in the 80s was pretty good for back then, but we have so many tiers on our soccer fields that it really restricts how we play. Football is kind of stuck between some, some areas that, you know, you need better accessibility, better fan areas. So this would be a major renovation of that complex. Um, parking lots, improve the skate park. That's one that's been hanging down our list for a while. Um, is honestly a promise that was made when we renovated the skate park originally that there would be a phase two. Um, the skate park folks are calling us on that. So we went ahead and moved this up. We have a meeting with them next week to just talk about, you know, what are some stopgap things we can maybe do. A bigger renovation. Eagle Bend drainage project. This one is is kind of new to the list, but it's been an ongoing problem. The driving range out there basically holds water. And then we have five or six places on the golf course that hold water if we get, you know, that rain that comes down pretty quick. So it's basically keeping us from opening. So this would go in and, and repair some of the drain issues. We have some large drain tiles that have collapsed. So this is kind of underground work, but um, it's kind of needed if we want to keep the facility up to the level we want. Park restrooms. We have a whole bunch of restrooms that were put in in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. They're the super secure metal buildings. A lot of those are starting to rust out. Probably in the last 10 years, we've gone to a concrete prefab facility that you basically bring a truck in, set them down, and you're ready to go. So this starts to contemplate replacing some of those old steel structures. 4.8 million total of 24 million proposed. And like Penny referenced, I 
I would be shocked if we got all this, but you know what? We need to ask. Okay, thank you, Mark. Mark. Uh, do, okay, go ahead, John. Mark, Mark, this is John Blazik. You know, I said this four years ago, the first time I saw one of these on one of our many committee meetings. I am so impressed with this CIP, a six year window. You know, I always called a plan of improvement, but I can tell you between what you guys have done and you and Lee and Derek and your, your, your staff is much more detailed than you find in a school district because they're maybe one year out, maybe two at the max, unless they're building a new building. And this is really impressive. Man, I just, I saw it four years ago and I was impressed and I still am. So thank you for all your work on this. Thanks, I appreciate that. Jackie Becker, uh, one more question, Mark. Uh, in the improvements for uh, the youth sports complex with you adding turf to some of the other fields, would you be looking to add turf to the YSC fields also you think, or no? That was our thought. Um, yeah, the, the Cobb Valley soccer folks are actually out there contemplating adding turf now, sooner rather than later. You know, I don't know what funding source they're gonna find for that, but they seem to have some thoughts on it. But yeah, I think, you know, if you look at where people are going when they're not staying here in Lawrence, they're going to, to some turf complexes in the Kansas City area or the Topeka area. So, you know, I, I would probably think that's where we need to go um, if we want to try to compete with those organizations or, or facilities. So then you'll just, we'll have to build a kickball complex that doesn't have turf on the softball fields then, right? <laughs> Get that in the CIP. Thanks. <laughs> you don't want to play kickball on turf? Well, I'll, I'll probably be retired by then, but um, I'll pass that on to the next generation of kickball players to see maybe they can handle it more than, than the rest of us who've been playing kickball for 20 years, you know? <laughs> Never have to get a rescheduled game. Um, Mark, this is Marilyn Hull. Are, are you getting any um, public advocacy that has to do with equity? Because um, I, I know some years ago, some folks in East Lawrence were really pushing for the splash pad. And it's, um, it's great that we're going to get that in. I'm, I'm wondering if there are any other um, projects that um, are being pushed by groups of citizens based on equity issues? Um, equity is kind of interesting in our business because it, it's how you want to define it. So a lot of times we get defined by geographic location. So they have a spray pad, but we don't. So you know, once we put one in East Lawrence, North Lawrence will be talking to us and then West Lawrence will be talking to us. So. We address a lot of that. The ADA compliance things, in my mind, are equity issues. So that's folks that may be in a wheelchair that want to go to a playground. Are we providing that or not? So I think you know you can look at that. There's we have people pull the equity card on pickleball versus tennis. Well, you know you're you're providing all that for them and nothing for us. So um, it's interesting. You know the racial equity in in our world really. I don't know that that exists so much, but it sure does geographically or by sport. It exists a lot. And, and people always want to say, hey, that playground's a lot better than mine. Why aren't you doing anything over here in our area? So, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's kind of the view we get sometimes. Yeah, that does. Thank you. Um, Derek Rogers, Director of Parks Recreation, I wanted to say a few things on that that it, it's interesting and if you look at the splash uh, spray parks, uh, we're trying to get them geographically around town. So the one in West Lawrence, and you think about how Lawrence has grown, where does it go? And we thought that would be a great project for advisory board and community engagement. Is it, you know, we actually master plan to have one over by the police station. And in our existing master plan, I think it's Stad Perry Park and there's a few other locations. But you almost need more of them uh, around West Lawrence. We'll have two um, basically east of Iowa Street, you know, whatever the dividing, if you want to say there's a geographical dividing line. 
<clears throat> but as the city has grown further west, is there actually two West Lawrence's or three, Old West, West, and then a new West, if you get clear out by the SLT. And so how do you get those and where the community really wants the assets uh, is one thing. And then another thing with the strategic plan, um, it's being conscious of how we look through the strategic plan, not only of all the commitment statements, but of all the outcomes, and not just focus on um, one of those, whether it be um, economic impact or um, safe neighborhoods. It's trying to look at the big picture and look through all the lenses as we look at projects and, and just getting that mindset around how we look at things. That, that's something I would encourage the board and us to uh, put our heads together as we hopefully get a new strategic plan and analyze what we're doing. Penny Holler, management analyst, and uh, to, to your thought, Marilyn, on um, you know defining equity, the strategic plan in the um, in the equity inclusion uh, mentions you know group differences, but then it also does speak specifically to um, inclusion and racial equity. So it does speak specifically and highlights that and brings it out. So I think that's something that you can expect us to be um, looking at um, and speaking further to. Uh, thank you guys, that's good to hear, especially since uh, that was a part of a great presentation that was given by uh, Mr. Partridge with the uh, Community Health Center. So. Um, I know that's on a lot of our minds, so we want to make sure that we keep that momentum going forward. Uh, okay, um, Mark, did you have anything else for us or was that it? I don't, and that will be moving forward to City Hall unless you have something you think of that we need to tweak a little bit. We'll submit it and see when it comes back to us. Okay. Did anybody else have any uh, questions for Mark? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And thank you uh, for being available for this. We really appreciate it. All right. Mark, this is uh -huh. Val Renault. There, uh -huh. uh, Lee sent us all a note that he had some follow up on the turf. I don't know if he still wants to talk about it. Uh, thank you for that, Val. Uh, Lee, do you? No, I, I don't know if my mic's working now, but when the question was asked on the turf, it, I know the compaction on turf, they test those at football fields, whether it's dirt, whether it's turf. And I can assure you that the turf is probably has more give than a hard surface that's not been watered. So, for instance, head injuries and stuff with football, a lot of the concussions actually happen on regular dirt or ground grass than they do on turf. So they do test the compaction. Uh, and then just to follow up with Mark said about tournaments that you know, tournament directors are looking at the sites to come to that they could get their 40 some games in in two days and not get rained out like he had mentioned. And I can assure you with turf, they're gonna play unless there's lightning. And so they're again, trying to get tournaments into town. They're looking at those facilities in Wichita, Kansas City, Topeka, uh, and, and most all of those have turf at this point. So I, that was the only follow-up that I had. Thanks. Thank you for that, Val, and uh, thank you for that, Lee. Do we uh, have any further questions? Okay, we're looking good. I think you're off the hook, Mark. <laughs> Try not to look so happy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Moving us on. Uh, looks like uh, next item on the agenda are any concerns uh, or items of interest for the board members? Do we, does anybody else have anything they want to go ahead and bring to the table? I'm not seeing. Uh, this is what, okay. What's the current status of the dog park conversation? And then the next step will be going back to the city commission with a, 
uh, reduce scope and fee for the consultant for the public engagement. Still going to have the same format, just less meetings. So it'll still be a steering committee working with the consultant and staff to try to come up with the, you know, whatever they can come up with on proposals to bring back to the city commission. Um, I just got an email about it today, just letting the steering committee know that it's still in works, but mm -hmm. it needs to go back to the city commission one more time. This is John Nelbandian. Um, there also was uh, information that um, that the city is checking with KDOT on the timetable for that uh, intersection there with K10. Uh, there was some conversation, I guess, that the timetable may be uh, sooner than was originally thought, and that would affect the uh, the likelihood of the road being uh, constructed. Thank you for that update, John. That actually, that uh, that's pretty that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Eric Rogers, Greg for Parks and Recreation. I want to say that the steering committee, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, was going to their next action or the time they meet on the dog park is in March. I want to say about mid March, but I just don't have the email in front of me. Yeah, I think David Cronin was talking about getting it back to the city commission early March and then would proceed after that. Uh, this is John now Bandian again. Um, I was on a walk the other day on the levee and uh, went all the way out to um, the, uh, the place where there's a dog park. And I wonder and I and I was so surprised because I didn't know there was a dog park out there and um, I wonder how many people do know about that. And you're talking the, about the you're talking about the one in North Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah. And I talked to a couple of people who had their dogs out there and they they thought it was just great. I mean, it's just an open, you know, it's it's there's nothing really looks like organized there, but um, it's called a dog park. And there were people with dogs out there. Yeah, we've had that for a number of years. It's obviously less popular than the one out by Clinton Lake, but there are some people that that's their dog park and they don't go to the other ones. So it's just geographic a little bit, I think. Well, and also, Mark, isn't there uh, some issue with access to it being so close to the river that, uh, you know, it is prone to flooding and whatnot? <laughs> It's a little more of a challenging site. Let's just put it that way. This is Val Renault. I, I go to that park in North Florida and um, I've never seen it flood. It's up pretty high, but uh, it's very wooded. So in the summer and spring, you think about ticks more <laughs> and, you know, there, and my dog runs into the river and gets dirty. And so, yeah, it's not quite as uh, multifaceted <laughs> as the other park is. But I do think people know about it and some don't. So. Okay. Um, do we have any more uh, items of interest out there? All right. Okay, thanks. Um, moving us on, uh, looks like we have the staff update. Uh, thank you guys for going ahead and sending that out. Does anybody have any comment on that? There was just a lot of um, new things that was really nice to to read about. Um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an old climber of rocks and I, I love hearing about the climbing wall. I was just curious about um, is that something supervised or is that just free play? I know the height of it doesn't, you know, create a lot of risk, but I didn't know what the procedure is as far as usage on that. I believe all those are supervised and I think Joe purchased those at the end of the, the year, both at East Lawrence Center and for the sports pavilion around the, um, gymnastics equipment and the paddings and the 
you know, it's a case of, you know, they fall and things like that. I think it, a lot of our ninja camps will be using those. So they'll be doing the camps, but yeah, I, I'm primarily going to be supervised just like gymnastics would. Mm -hmm. Is that maybe something you're going to branch off and, and look into even higher, maybe outside walls or, or has that been anything discussed? Well, Mark could probably touch on that a little bit more on the when they designed the sports pavilion because they were looking at possibly putting a climbing wall in there. And I think that was one of the things that got cut. Uh, okay. Certainly a lot of wall space. It, it is a higher um, staffing need when we go up to a higher because you basically have to have a way to rope people up and down. <laughs> so it's it's kind of fun. That one's only about eight foot tall, but it's still pretty fun to even work across the thing. Yeah. And just thinking of current trends, it's 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 a very popular thing. And I just didn't know if that's something that um, Parks and Rec staff are, are visiting as far as thinking about doing that. But love seeing the small stuff. That's great. All right. Thanks, Pat. Uh, did anybody else have any uh, comment about the uh, staff update there? Okay, seeing as there is none, uh, just wanted to let you guys know that our next meeting is March 8th at 5.30 p.m. And if everybody is cool with it, I would like to adjourn. Is there a motion out there? Jackie Becker, I motion to adjourn. All right, Jackie Becker, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Marilyn Hull, second. Marilyn Hull with the second. And I would assume there is no sort of discussion or conversation that needs to be had. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye <laughs> or raise your hand. That's whatever. Uh, any opposed? Say nay. I'm hearing nothing, so we are adjourned. All right, land speed record for a meeting, folks. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Good job. Take care, everyone. Stay warm. Right. And I love the staff updates, everyone. Yeah, I do too. You guys as well.